Welcome back to the channel. If you are hearing my voice, you are officially in the YouTube underground. I'm not sure how you wound up here, but you are at the ground zero of something quite special and quite magical. So congratulations to you for being a part of history, because I do believe this body of work that I'm creating will be something that people study in the future. Today's topic is one of my favorites. It is, it is dealing with the limits of human understanding, what it means to be wise, lost occult knowledge, and where does reality cross over into fiction? That particular point is something that I ponder over quite often, and I always have, where exactly does reality bleed over into fiction? Because you see, where you choose to draw this line, where you choose to draw the line on where reality meets fiction is directly related to whether or not people consider you insane. <laughs> but I'll get to that later. Uh, for everyone out there who is familiar with the Christian framework, and you are familiar with the character of Jesus in the Bible, this portion of the Christian framework is colloquially termed the nativity the nativity of Jesus or Christ. And for everyone familiar with this framework, I'm sure you are familiar with a mysterious figure or more accurately, three mysterious figures. They are called the three wise men or the three kings, depending on your tradition of worship. And not much is known about these three figures. In the Christian framework, they are described as learned men who, by mysterious means, were able to predict and know exactly where the character of Jesus would be born. Now, in the Bible, it says that they looked up to a star, meaning by some way of astrology, they were able to predict and pinpoint a location on a world changing event. Obviously, in the Christian framework, this event would be the birth of Jesus. And I find this quite interesting, as many people often do. And I know that this is 2023 and the entire idea of navigation has been so simplified that even a toddler or even a 12 year old can figure out how to get from one end of the country to the other. But this took place during a time where even simple trips you would be risking your life to take the risk of becoming hopelessly lost and dying on the way was very real. So feats of navigation like this are not to be taken lightly. So today, this obviously raises many questions. And it seems that the more questions that you are able to answer surrounding these mysterious figures, the more questions you wind up with. How during this period in history were these men able to essentially divinate a world changing event? What sorts of practices would you have had to have known in order to accomplish this? It's important to realize that most of human history has been lost. And many of the things that people knew in ancient times, we no longer know. 
it's important for people listening to me to understand that. And in the Christian framework, the idea of mysteries have been essentially eliminated due to uh, Puritan Anglo-Saxon thinking, due to the age of logic, sterilely examining these ancient stories and trying to make everything literally true. One of the good things about the Jewish faith is that they have the Kabbalah, which is essentially a section or a tradition of the religion where topics like these that are filled with mystery are seriously investigated and taught. But in the Christian tradition, the mystery of the three wise men remains a mystery that people are uninterested in. And I believe it's a real shame because for us today to think that we know what these people knew back then is a complete farce. I mean, we have the most shining, obvious example today. We still don't know how the pyramids were built. And this is something that is a uh, wonder of the world. It is something that is quite obvious and we still don't know. And I'm not one of these pyramid alien conspiracy theorists, but we have to acknowledge and get down off of our high horse that we know it all. Now, every major spiritual practice agrees that we cannot have knowledge of the creator, depending on whatever religion or whatever practice you follow, you'll call it something different. But we have all seemed to agree that we cannot know this entity. But how much of it can we know? That is the mystery. How much, how much of reality can we parse through? What pockets and what folds of reality can we know and manipulate? You see, the, the marvel of modern science is that it has been able to parse out the world of the material. We can manipulate atoms and electrons and do all sorts of things with physical matter. But every person walking this planet understands that life is more than just matter. There is something more than atoms and molecules and quarks and things that you can physically see taking up space or at least physically conceive taking up space because obviously we can't see these microscopic particles. But it is a human instinct that there is something more than matter. How much of, how much of this can we understand? We call these things today superstition or supernatural. But they are as natural as the grass is green. They are an inherent part of reality and life in general. And history and all of these spiritual texts, all of these sacred writings are rife with people doing things that are unbelievable for us today. And we simply write it off as these people were simply unintelligent monkeys that believed in magic tricks and were fooled by some sort of magician. Now, I believe that there was magic taking place, but not the type of magic we had to we have today. What you're probably thinking of is what is properly termed an illusionist. I'm not talking about illusions and sleight of hand. I'm talking about something quite more mysterious than that. And these people from these ancient times, they had an entirely different framework by which they lived. They thought and viewed life and reality in a different way. 
And I know today we have 24 hour access to the internet and we are glued to our cell phones. But these people lived life in a way that you cannot fathom today. I know that you think that you can imagine what it's like, but you are doing just that. You are pontificating and imagining. These are entire civilizations of people who did not have the constant stimulation of cell phones. They essentially lived life day to day and in the moment. This is a way of life that has been completely lost to us today. They didn't sit around all day trying to uh, get with women and uh, fulfill their petty desires. And I'm sure you can use your imagination and see that with that kind of framework and with that kind of time, you have nothing but time you can probably get into some odd things, things that we just simply have no interest in today. And I find it quite funny and ironic that these same people who we discard and write off as easily tricked fools that believed in this superstitious hoopla, these are some of the same people who gave us mathematics, who invented geometry. These are the same people who laid the framework through which our civilization can exist today. And we tend to pick and choose what we want from them. It's funny because Isaac Newton was a known alchemist, or at least believed in, he believed in magic. And this is the same man who gave us calculus. It's baffling what has happened to mankind and what I term the heart of man. Man's heart has been hardened. And it's almost as if we made a trade that we enhanced our brain at the sacrifice of our heart. But I digress. This is a video about these wise men that through whatever magical means were able to interface with reality and divinate something enormous. I'll use an example of today. There is a mega famous popular YouTuber by the name of Mr. Beast. When Mr. Beast was starting his YouTube journey, he stated in interviews that in order for his channel to become what it was in his start, before he started, he said he studied the algorithm. He studied the YouTube algorithm relentlessly, night and day. Now, what does that mean? He said he studied the YouTube algorithm and by knowledge and understanding of this algorithm, he was able to create a channel which delivered content in a way that blew up. Oh, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, that he was able to deliver content in a way that his channel was able to grow to astronomical levels. And I'm sure he's making hundreds of millions of dollars and everything is good with Mr. Beast. But I say all of that to say, what does it mean when he says he studied the algorithm? The algorithm of YouTube is quite complex. In order for him to study the algorithm, I want to try to equate this to the same thinking or the same method of understanding reality that these three mysterious figures in the Torah and in the Bible were able to use. You see, the algorithm is not a physical thing. It is an immaterial construct devised by Google and the people at YouTube. 
by studying this immaterial construct, Mr. Beast was able to chart out a path. And as a result, he is able to perform powerful magic because but have no doubt about it. What he is doing is magic. He has hacked the brain of millions of people. He knows how to make a thumbnail that you have to click on when you see it. If that isn't magic, I don't know what is. And I know that the term magic that I'm using might be triggering you and making you think I'm some sort of kook. But it is quite literally mind control. And what I'm saying is. Think about what's possible. Look at the comparison I'm making. Think about what's possible. If you can study the immaterial framework or the immaterial structure of a algorithm. And from that extract hundreds of millions of dollars. Think about what other immaterial structures you can study and gain knowledge of and manipulate. Think about it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not claiming to have the answers or to be able to solve the mystery because then it wouldn't be a mystery anymore. But life and reality is filled with these types of mysteries. And the goal or at least one of the goals of this channel is to reignite that spark that we seem to have lost uh, to get rid of some of the cynicism that we have about things in life in general, because cynicism doesn't lead to anywhere meaningful. There is an obvious limit to human understanding, but where that limit is, that is the question. That is the mystery. And it all goes back to what I said in the beginning. Where you choose to draw the line between fact and fiction. That ultimately determines where you stand on this video or how you feel about what I'm saying. But I've talked for a bit too long. Please, if you've made it this far, which very few people do. That means that you have a particular interest in these sorts of topics. I make videos every day. Uh, so please consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, comment. If you interact with the video, what I do know about the YouTube algorithm is that it will show it to more people. So by you in, uh, through you interacting with the video, you are literally creating the community that you seek. Um, and that's about it for this video. So until next time, y'all have a blessed day.